guys, Jared here, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about Dragon Quest. And I know I've done a lot of different vlogs lately, uh, some about Dragon Quest actually. Um, but this is sort of like a hype video. I want to hype you guys up for Dragon Quest VIII, which releases relatively soon. I believe it's the 20th or 24th, something like that. Um, and just, yeah, I just really wanted to just talk uh, really quickly, try and get you guys to go buy the game. Um, for those that don't know, I am a huge Dragon Quest fan, been a Dragon Quest fan for pretty much my whole life, uh, ever since the original Famicom version. Uh, I had a friend of mine who used to import the games, and I've said the story like a thousand times, and played through pretty much all of the Dragon Quests that were released on the NES, well, the, the Famicom, and the Super Famicom, via my friend. Um, so, yeah, um, when, when Dragon Quest VII came out, which one is it? Here we go. Dragon Quest VII was released, this is the Japanese version, I imported this, I actually finished this one off, polished it off, put in um, like almost a hundred hours or something into this one because, uh, well, just because. Uh, then I purchased it again on, um, on the, well, this is, <laughs> they're the exact same thing, if you flip it around, they really didn't do anything with this. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but one's in Japanese, one's in English, but literally it's like the exact same thing, um, which is really kind of surprising. They didn't change the box art like at all on the front or the back. Um, but Dragon Quest 7, the problem with Dragon Quest 7 is that it's a really long game. It's, it's kind of, I say it's like the black sheep. It's not really the black sheep. Dragon Quest 2 is the black sheep of the series, but it's sort of like that because it's so long that it, it kind of pushes people away a little bit because there's there's a real time sink or time investment that you have to put into the game and it's a little bit repetitive uh, especially when you're in in the past and you're you're doing something um, going through dungeons and areas and this and that and everything else and then you have to come back to the future or present and do the exact same thing all over again and repeat this like ad nauseum essentially um, so there's a lot of people who aren't really a big fan of that. I didn't grab the original PlayStation version, I don't know why, but I just did. Okay, so, um, this is a great game, don't get me wrong. It's just that to start with the series, if you haven't played any of the other ones, maybe not the best one to start with. However, this is the best one to start with. It really is. This is a great game. This is the Japanese version of Dragon Quest VIII, and I went through and beat this one. Um, and now I'm just waiting for the, uh, the the release here. I'm actually so insane, I actually purchased Dragon Quest VII digitally as well on the 3DS. I'm woo nuts with this series. So I'm kind of curious, I haven't even looked at seeing if the box art's going to be exactly the same. Well, if it is, like Dragon Quest VII, you can expect that. And you can expect the back to look like that. Um, but we'll see. Uh, also happened to pick up a Dragon Quest X all in one package and it's sealed. And the reason why it's sealed for this particular thing is I wanted to have um, a backup just in case I ever lost the file uh, because for digital downloads I never made a backup of Dragon Quest X of the original installer and I'm not entirely sure how that works. So I just wanted this just to be safe. Um, but yeah, so this was all about a hype video for, I'm jumping all over the place today, I know. Um, for Dragon Quest VIII, and here is Dragon Quest VIII on the PlayStation 2. This is my original copy that I got way back when. Um, I adore this game. I absolutely adore this game. And one of the reasons why I think a lot of people played it, though, was for that. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but it says playable demo inside for Final Fantasy XII. Final Fantasy XII was a very divisive uh, Final Fantasy game, and I could do a whole vlog on that, but I'm not going to. Um, just to say that this PlayStation 2 game, I think, sold extremely well because of that included demo. Just people were very, very, very uh, excited, looking forward to it. And what they ended up getting, though, was a phenomenal RPG. Um, and that was sort of like an aside to many different people, when in reality, this is why you should have bought the game. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal game. First one actually called Dragon Quest in North America. And um, there's quite a few differences, actually, between these two. You get two different characters in this particular one. Um, but outside that, I mean, you know, some of the graphics, of course, have been downgraded in certain things. Um, other elements have changed here and there. I'm going to save all of that, of course, for the review when I go um, and review the game eventually, like I did with Dragon Quest VII. And yeah, it's going to take me a little while, because if you uh, have watched that video, 
you know that uh, it's like, what, 20 minutes, 25 minutes long, and the same thing is going to happen with Dragon Quest VIII. I can ramble on and on and on and on and on with these particular games. Uh, and the reason why I brought this one home was so that I could get some direct feed uh, footage to show you guys, sort of like what I did with Seven, show you guys side by side, not really side by side, but one clip and then another clip, uh, to show you some of the differences. Now, naturally, because I, I never got a 3DS with a direct, uh, with a capture card in it, Unfortunately, I can't show you direct footage, and it really sucks, man. I, I actually went and, and spent the money on that, and it just all fell through because the guy was uh, telling me, like, oh, it's going to take, like, a month, then two months, then three months, four months to get one made. I was like, you know what? Screw this. Give me my money back, basically, because I was like, what the hell? Um, so that was really unfortunate because I wanted to do that for you guys. I really wanted to show you some 3DS uh, direct footage, but alas, it just never happened. So, all this to say is I'm a giant Dragon Quest fan, you all know that. We have our Let's Play Dragon Quest X uh, woo -hoo, um, video every Thursday. And uh, I just really wanted to hype you guys up that this is a phenomenal RPG. This really is a phenomenal RPG. If you're looking for a way of getting into Dragon Quest, that's the game. So when it comes out on the 3DS, I highly recommend everybody run out and get that. I really do. More so even than Dragon Quest VII. Because, like I said, with Dragon Quest VII, it is much more of a time investment, a lot more repetition, and a lot of the, the gameplay mechanics are quite archaic in comparison to this. This, they really set the bar high. Um, and some would argue that the gameplay has not actually been perfected since this one. Nine went in a different direction. Nine's a very good game. It's a very, very good game. But it went a little bit of a different direction because its focus was more on having local multiplayer. It was having people in the same room together experiencing a Dragon Quest game. That was really what it was all about. Um, and then Dragon Quest X, this bad boy here, uh, was all about, you know, bringing that sort of same experience like Nine, but bringing that to the worldwide uh, audience, which unfortunately meant Japan. Um, and in that MMO setting, but it really is not like your classic MMO. If you haven't, go ahead, I encourage you to watch my review of Dragon Quest X. Really get an idea of what the game is like. It's a very, very large, rich Dragon Quest adventure that just so happens to have massively multiplayer online RPG features to it. But with Dragon Quest VIII here, this, this is really... It was like sort of the last one that you had a traditional party, you could talk to your different party members, and, and they each had their own motivations for while they were going, why they were going after Durmagus. Um, it had incredible production values. I'm really curious to see how the 3DS one compares to this for the North American version. You see, the original Dragon Quest VIII, which I did not think to bring home my Japanese version, um, the difference between the Japanese version of Dragon Quest VIII and this version of Dragon Quest VIII is night and day. Square put some serious money into this bad boy. I think it was Square Enix, yeah, at this time. I look because, you know, Square and Enix, I don't know why I even did that. They merged a hell of a long time uh, before this. But... Um, they, they put some serious production values into this, and it shows. This is a breathtaking game. Great voice acting, beautiful uh, score, soundtrack, uh, great menu system, just all around just a phenomenal, phenomenal game. And it's going to be really interesting to see how this one compares to the North American version of this, because we already know that the orchestrated soundtrack that's in this one has been removed. To a synthesized soundtrack with the uh, North American version and that's so odd considering this one had an orchestrated soundtrack so I don't know what's up with that uh, and I don't know what other differences there's going to be in the North American version but I'll tell you I can't wait to find out and I really really hope that all of you check it out if you like turn-based RPGs whatsoever this is an instant buy because it's one of the best out there and it's aged perfectly and really truly uh, the series needs your support because Dragon Quest XI for the first time since when the hell did this come out? 2005, okay? Um, here, probably 2004 in Japan. But 2005 
it will be 11 years, more than a decade, since we've had a numbered Dragon Quest game that followed the traditional um, sort of RPG tropes and of having your core party that's all affected with the story, like they all have their own individual motivations. They're not generic characters that you either make, like in Dragon Quest IX, or real life people that you meet, as in Dragon Quest X. This is going to be a really, uh, maybe the last Dragon Quest game where you have, um, you know, your classic team, because I really can see the series going into mobile in um, in the future, like I can see Dragon Quest XII being a mobile game. Uh, still using, you know, all the classic Dragon Quest turn-based commands and all this sort of stuff, I can, I can see that. I can just, I can also really see it going mobile because it's a Japanese series. Um, and, you know, there's no way that the sales of Dragon Quest XI are going to be you know, like 20 million or something, whereas if they put this on mobile and they actually charge, that's the thing. Not a free game, but if they actually charge, I really could see this selling a ridiculous amount uh, to the Japanese audience. But in North America, I'm not so sure. I'm not really convinced of that. But Dragon Quest always goes to the platform that has the highest user base. It's always been like that. So if you want to support a really great role-playing game, go out and purchase Dragon Quest VIII as soon as it hits which, like I said, I think is the 20th. If I'm not mistaken, it's the 20th, but it could be the 24th. It's because I have a list of um, different titles that are coming out, and I always screw up that. So that's it, guys. Uh, just my, one last hurrah before the game comes out. I really do hope you give this one a go. It is the perfect Dragon Quest to, um, to jump on into the series. Dabble, you know, get, get your feet wet a little bit and see if the series is for you. All right, guys, I'll be back soon with another video. Take care, everyone.